Hello my dear students. Today our topic is lipoprotein part 3 and we are going to discuss about lipoprotein metabolism. In among this lipoprotein metabolism, we are going to deal with metabolism of chylomicron. What is metabolism of chylomicron? Which are the different steps involved in chylomicron metabolism? There are six steps in chylomicron metabolism. Formation of nasal chylomicron, formation of mature chylomicron, action of lipoprotein lipase, role of free fatty acid and glycerol formed from triazylglycerol by the action of LPL, formation of chylomicron remnants and finally uptake of chylomicron remnants by liver. Okay, as you all know what is chylomicron? It's a lipoprotein. What are the functions of lipoprotein? Lipoprotein is used for the transport of lipids. So, the first lipoprotein that is our chylomicron, it is formed after the digestion and absorption of lipids in our body. So, the first step that is formation of nasal chylomicron. Cholesterol and fatty acid released from dietary fats by digestion and these are absorbed into intestinal mucosal cells and re-esterified to form cholesterol ester and triazylglycerol with phospholipids and two apolipoprotein which are those two apoproteins or the protein part of lipoprotein they are ApoA and ApoB48 all together that means cholesterol ester, triazylglycerol, phospholipids and two apoprotein ApoA and ApoB48 all together secreted into lymphatic system as nasal chylomicron. So, in short, after the digestion and absorption of lipids, simple compound, after the digestion, complex lipid compounds are converted into simple compound. At the time of absorption, the simple compounds are converted into complex compounds. That is very clear from our topic, digestion and absorption of lipids. I will give you that in detail. So, this cholesterol and fatty acid released from digestion and absorbed into intestinal mucosal cells re-esterified to form cholesterol esters and triazylglycerol with phospholipids and ApoA and ApoB48. That is our chylomicron and it is known as nascent chylomicron. Okay. So, cholesterol esters, triazylglycerol, phospholipids, ApoA and ApoB48. This together is known as nascent chylomicron. Okay. Then, second topic, second step. That is our formation of mature chylomicron. After entering the circulation, nascent chylomicron acquired ApoC2 and ApoE from circulating HDL. What is HDL? HDL is known as high density lipoprotein or it is known as good cholesterol. And this HDL donates two apolipoprotein, ApoC2 and ApoE to this nascent chylomicron. And it converted to form mature chylomicron. So, there is a function for this ApoC2. ApoC2 that activate one enzyme, it is known as lipoprotein lipase, LPL. That is the major enzyme that involved in chylomicron metabolism. Okay. Third step involved in chylomicron metabolism, that is action of lipoprotein lipase. So, what is lipoprotein lipase, how it is activated and what is, uh, what is the result of the action of lipoprotein lipase. So, first of all, lipoprotein lipase is present on the capillary walls of adipose tissues and skeletal muscle and ApoC2 which is coming from our HDL that activates lipoprotein lipase. Then, what is the role of lipoprotein lipase? Triazylglycerol that is present in chylomicron. Okay, mature chylomicron. It is removed by the action of LPL. How it is removed? LPL hydrolyzes triglycerides, triazylglycerols into fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, to, uh, LPL hydrolyzes triglycerides present in chylomicrons into fatty acids and glycerol. Muscle or adipose tissue cells take up this liberated fatty acid and glycerol enter into glycolytic pathway. Which are the activators and inhibitors of this enzyme lipoprotein lipase? Activator, heparin injection that clears lipemia. What is meant by lipemia? 
chylomicron accumulation in the blood after lipid fatty food okay so by the action of lpl this heparin injection uh, we can activate uh, lpl by heparin so heparin injection that clears lipemia and this is known as post heparin lipolytic activity insulin it's a hormone that reduces blood glucose level okay so insulin also increases lpl activity one inhibitor is there we are very familiar foc2 which is coming from hdl and enter into nascent chylomicron then the chylomicron converted into mature chylomicron this foc2 that if there is lack of foc2 that decreases lpl activity okay so activators heparin and insulin inhibitor lack of c2 okay the next role of free fatty acid and glycerol formed from triacyl glycerol by the action of lpl triacyl glycerol by the action of lipoprotein lipase converted into free fatty acid and glycerol what happens to this free fatty acid and glycerol free fatty acid taken up by adipose cells taken up by skeletal and heart muscles for energy bound with albumin in plasma then glycerol that enter into hepatic glycolytic pathway okay so that's about the fate of free fatty acid and glycerol then finally after the conversion of triacyl glycerol into free fatty acid and glycerol what happens to the chylomicron chylomicrons are converted into chylomicron remnants okay chylomicron loses 90 percentage of triacyl glycerol by the action of lpl and shrink in size these remnants contain cholesterol cholesterol ester epoe 48 and epoe cholesterol from these remnants utilized from cell membrane components and bile salt okay so formation of chylomicron remnants chylomicron loses 90 percentage of triacyl glycerol by the action of lpl and shrink in size these remnants contain cholesterol cholesterol ester epoe b48 and epoe cholesterol from these remnants utilized to form cell membrane components and bile salts the next step that is uptake of chylomicron remnants by liver remnants are taken up by hepatic cells by receptor mediated endocytosis epoe binds the hepatic receptor so remnants are taken up by hepatic cells by receptor mediated endocytosis epoe that binds the hepatic receptor then we can cut short our chylomicron metabolism with this diagram so dietary lipids when enter into small intestine it can be converted into chylomicron that is known as nascent chylomicron nascent chylomicron contain triacyl glycerol and cholesterol along with two epolipoprotein which is known as epoa and epoe b48 we can see there are two epoproteins epoc2 and epoe coming from hdl and this nascent chylomicron converted into mature chylomicron so this mature chylomicron contain four epoproteins epoe epoc2 epoa and epoe b48 epoc2 activate lpl lipoprotein lipase and triacyl glycerol present in mature chylomicron converted into glycerol plus free fatty acid and this glycerol convert enter into liver glycolytic pathway and free fatty acids that will be used for the energy purpose then the remaining part okay the size of mature chylomicron decreases because we utilize triacyl glycerol almost 90 percentage of triacyl glycerols are utilized by this enzyme lpl what is lpl lipoprotein lipase which are the activators of lpl heparin and insulin which are the inhibitors lack of foc2 because foc2 is the main activator of lpl so lack of foc2 will inhibit this enzyme lpl lipoprotein lipase so after the action of the key enzyme lipoprotein lipase triacyl glycerol are utilized and the size of chylomicron reduces and finally the small size chylomicron remnants are formed this is known as chylomicron remnants 
before the formation of chylomicron remnants, the two EPO protein, EPO A and EPO C2, return to HDL. Okay, HDL it is known as reservoir of EPO protein. HDL is known as reservoir of EPO protein. Reservoir of EPO protein. Then the chylomicron remnants enter into liver by the action of receptor mediated endocytosis. Receptor mediated endocytosis. Okay. So finally, chylomicron remnants are taken up by the liver. 